Hey, Ticat fans, welcome to Task and Twos, our weekly update with myself, Luke Tasker. I'm joined with Andy Fan Twos here. Andy, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Doing great. Do you uh, have your suit picked out for uh, for the big week here? I I'm I'm kind of a last minute packer normally, so I I did get my I did make sure my suits were clean. I'm going to pick them up today, and uh, and but I haven't decided which one to wear, so. Uh, not quite, but I got an idea. Yeah. So we've talked about it uh, throughout the season on Task and Twos, but this is the week. Andy, uh, you're going out to Regina to be uh, for the Plaza of Honor celebration or uh, where your name will be put in stone for all of time in Saskatchewan. That is awesome, man. Very, very excited for you. What, have, uh, what do you know about well, what to expect for the week as of now? Uh, not much has changed yet. Um, we still have the gala tomorrow night, which will be the actual inductee cere- induction ceremony. And uh, so there'll be some video clips and a speech and, uh, you know, a room full of people. And then we're going to do a, like a small breakfast on the, on the Saturday. And then the game, uh, the game will be Saturday afternoon where we'll kind of walk out at halftime. So I, I, I'm excited for the whole thing. It's uh yeah, it's it's going to be great to go out there and just hopefully, um, you know, it's it's safe and all that stuff, you know, all that, all that outside, all that outside nonsense. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, is your hopefully your travels are safe, but man, that is such an exciting thing, man. What a what a cool deal. I'll I'll tune into the uh, SAS game. Hopefully they hopefully they show some coverage on it uh, through through the halftime. Yeah, cool. How was your trip home? Uh, how was your flight home? You know, we survived. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't easy uh six and a half hours uh from from anchorage to chicago so uh that we took the red eye this time so my kids slept pretty well on the uh on the red eye uh back home it was it was a little bit more it was a little bit better than the flight to anchorage which almost which almost got the best of me i almost died on the way there so <laughs> Uh, but it'll be a long time before I take my kids on a flight like that again. Like they're just, they're not ready for it, man. One and a half years old is not, is not, uh, ideal for a six and a half hour plane flight. Uh, yeah, it's, it's almost better. It's almost better to have them like from two to two to seven months when they don't move yet. Right. Oh, hundred percent. Instead of between like seven months and three years old or something like that. Yeah. Uh, a, a baby my brother has like a, an infant uh she's three months old uh that she was the easiest one of all seven kids for sure <laughs> but but everybody else had their moments throughout the flight including me because i'm like about to like <laughs> you, like you just put your hands up sometimes like there's nothing i can do but people were fairly uh the people sitting around the kids were fairly patient (laughs) yeah patient or just you know understanding empathetic towards our situation so that was okay and uh uh, we're we're glad to be back but it was it was a trip of a lifetime man alaska was unbelievable we we uh well not only because it's my sister's wedding of course but we did we did so many so many cool things up there and uh but i am glad to be back uh excited to get back in the booth on monday and uh get up there to watch the tie cats start to shape shape things up for the second half of the year um four and four uh more than halfway through the season what's your take on where they stand right now i mean we still i feel like we haven't seen a truly competent or truly filled out offensive performance uh from the tie cats yet no sir i certainly not uh yeah it was it was a little a little disappointing on, uh, on, on Saturday. I thought, uh, like, I thought that Mazzoli looked, looked like his demeanor was, was the proper and he was looking downfield and going through his reads, but he just couldn't keep, they couldn't keep stringing first downs together and they couldn't get off. They couldn't convert any second downs. So, um, they got to get something to click and start having some more fun out there and like playing for each other. Cause they can't just keep relying on the defense and the special teams like that. It's gotta be that complimentary football, right? I agree. The, the games that they have won this year. Um, I specifically think about labor day and the game in Montreal. That was complimentary football, including, including production on the offensive side of the ball. And it was, you know, it was really clear to watch the Ticats were in control of those games. Uh, 
I, it's so interesting to me because for our years uh, in Hamilton together, it seemed to me like if we had times in the season where, where we were uh, sputtering on offense like that, we wouldn't be sitting at four and four. You know, there were times where it felt like we were playing good and we, and we were one and five, you know, as the season went on, which is kind of promising. I mean, and I've, I've said this in our, in the task and two shows in, in the weeks past leading up here, but just a little, just a little bit of, of uh, cohesiveness as the season goes on. And, and, and we might turn into our record might look, the Tigers record might be very promising as we go into the second half of the season. Seemed to me like for so many years of the Ticats, it had to be perfect football in order to win a game. And they, they are, they are putting some wins uh, in the record with, with imperfect football. Um, it goes obviously to what the opponents are, are doing as well. The East is just, it, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Ottawa has a chance to be, uh, have as many wins as the Tie Cats if they win two games in the next six days, which they have the chance to, and that's fascinating as well. I mean, like everything is still up for grabs as we progress in the second half of the season, which is kind of true to CFL form. You know, every year it seems like things are settling late, but still, not nothing's decided yet. Yeah, you gotta like you gotta like where where the Cats are sitting, like in the standings for sure, because. They they sort of still control their destiny. They got two games in, with Toronto coming up, and that that'll really tell the tide. So there's there's really no excuses if if they fall behind after these games. So they're in a good position. Um, but to, just to, if you do want to fast forward and you think about going against you know like Winnipeg for instance, uh, again, and you're going to need some offensive production because um, the the D defense will be equally as good and and or are, are, are in the same level at least and in the same ballpark and then their offense is playing a heck of a lot better than the cats offense and the special teams is similar also so you're going to need to step it up a bit but i mean with last game though it did still feel like the cats were in control like to me even though their offense wasn't doing anything but you got to give Montreal some credit because there were so many points in that game where you thought, oh, okay, now it's over. Oh, now it's over. And yeah, they just kept making those plays. So if you were, if you and I were on that other side, like that would have been a really fun game to be a part of. Well, a really fun fourth quarter and overtime to be a part of because right. they kept converting on second and long, third down, like, and then third and 20 on the touchdown. Like that's just unreal. Right. Like we would have been going nuts. So you got to give them some credit. Like sometimes you just like, those are some great plays that they made. They were, the touchdown was fantastic. And the the play before that touchdown was a huge sack. And like you said, you thought, oh, okay, good, good, good. Where it's now it's done now. Now it's done. But yeah, I mean, yeah, good for them. You're so right. I, you know, you flip, you flip the side. I would like, what a fun locker room that is to be a part of and good for those guys. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll appreciate this. Yeah. So the uh the cat the tie cats like their their graphics guys are, are trying to get me who's the player of the game and, and it's like man montreal's coming down to try to take the lead how can i how can i choose yeah. and then and they're just, so they're kind of pressuring me so they can put a graphic together and then right when that sack happened i said okay delicate he's 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 the player of the game and then of course burlet comes back and hits a 55 yarder into that yeah. crazy wind to go like to have four field goals. And I just feel like, Oh, I would be pissed if I was him <laughs> because like, <laughs> I for sure would have chosen if I knew that happened. And, yeah. and they ended up changing the graphic anyway and putting him as a performer in the game. So I was like, Oh man, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know for next time I'm not, I'm going to, yeah. I can switch it if I need to. Right. Yeah. Don't say till the end. Gotta, gotta, gotta give those kicker, those special teamers some, some love sometimes. Oh, I loved that man. Like, cause as I was watching it, like man he, they had the camera right on him as he's setting up for his kick and he had a he had a look on his face like i was so pumped because i can think back to making those holds of those crucial field goals and like that time where like if you're if you're on the same page if you if you're really feeling it with the with your operation snap hold kick I mean, that's a that's an awesome moment and he looked ready for that and he freaking blasted it that was that was an unbelievable kick man he blasted it like the, yeah. the the Montreal kicker. He he had a forty three yarder the same direction that fell on like the four yard line or something like that. 
Yeah. So now Coach O was saying the wind had, he thinks the wind had died down and I wasn't there, but had the wind, yeah. I guess, it, it had decreased, I guess, at that time in the game? A little bit, yeah, but still. Yeah. 55 yards is 50 yards no matter oh, what. It definitely was not with the wind. So, yeah. It was awesome on TV because it, you know, it goes and actually hits. The, the posts in the field but went through the, the cr- over the crossbar like they're like so so awesome man good for them that was great I was sure he was going to get a chance to kick another overtime field goal you know that would have been that would have been uh, ideal um I remember a game where <laughs> against BC in 2013 at home I dropped I'm t- talking literally dropped a touchdown pass like a corner route like just I dropped it no touchdowns in the the game just five field goals and we beat bc that way so <laughs> <laughs> that i remember there's some there's crazy stuff man crazy things happen out there that's uh th- that, that's cool but yeah he probably probably did deserve the player of the game for that for that uh field goal and that's a heartbreaker man for the team to hit a to have a great play like that you know a, like an all-time field goal of, of the tie cats and then to to uh miss it in overtime but yeah this is what I this is what I'm picturing on, on the Ticats offense right now. Don't you remember those times where the the play that sparks a, a drive where they start stringing first downs together is just those is those option routes, cluster options. You know, with remember in uh, I think it was 2015 or something where you and myself would just leave the huddle and say, okay, you run the option now. And then we would switch <laughs> and say, okay, I'll go in the front of the cluster. You run the option now until Zach Claros told us, Hey, you guys got to You're confusing me. So you got to, like, whoever's in the huddle going to going to run the option. I need you to run the option. But we were just, we were just out there freewheeling, man. Like, it seems like, it seems like the quick, easy passes, the, the, uh, the ones with where the quarterback and that receiver have a lot of trust in the trust jar, you know, that's what, that's what used to do it to us. Just the, just the, almost the gimmies, you know, where you can option and take what's there. Yeah. I think, I think they'll get, they'll start getting Addison a little more involved in that type of, that type of uh, scheme because he seemed like watching him, he seemed like he didn't miss a beat. Um, like I'm sure physically he wasn't quite a hundred percent, but he was feeling those zones and settling into the right areas. And like, to me, he was, it was like, find that guy, keep feeding him the ball. Uh, he was he was one guy that stood out for me that had an excellent game as a receiver. So I think he's a smart player and can see the field like that, and uh, would be a good guy to kind of to lean on a little bit and uh, and help help string some first downs. He is a guy who can run the option route hundred percent. He has a he has a great feel for a he has the CFL slot receiver feel. He can wrap. He can wrap the will. He, he, he is very, very savvy with that stuff. And it is great to see him back out there. Like, I mean, he's an asset and he is – Mike Morales said it in the game and I totally uh, agree with his call on this. He is just that kind of receiver that his presence and the way he is on the field does make the other receivers around him better. Some of that's just production. When, when, you, start to, when you start to make completions down the field, other guys start to be able to improve their – uh, uh performance as well but really excited to see him get back in the mix a little bit you know all 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 the offensive struggles that there's been man four and four with a defense that's playing very well is, is still great and not that the fourth quarter was a hard quarter for the for the Ticats defense no doubt they're gonna have those but really really been impressed all year with with the defensive performance yeah, I agree completely. Going against Toronto coming up, like from in the past, they've shown, at least against us, a lot of zone. So option routes might not be the the ideal play, but there there is definitely a chance to start lighting it up, I guess, with the scene routes and, uh, you know, just outnumbering people in the different areas of the different levels of coverage. And, uh, and you know, Mazzoli is good at throwing those scene balls. Um, so this will be a good chance, I think, for him to – and guys like Speedy and Acklin to get back involved and um, to run up those seams and, and get open and outnumber the safeties. Are you going to be uh, back in town for, the, for, the, for our Monday game or will you be still out in Sask? Oh, I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah, we are nice. – Louie and I will be uh, 
out in the out- outdoors, rain or shine, and uh, pumped for that. I don't even care if it rains. I think it'd be super fun. So, That's you awesome. know, this is the first, like, I think this is the first Monday Labor Day game that Ticats have hosted in a long time. Uh, I don't Thanksgiving know how many years. Day, yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah. Thanksgiving Day, yes, yeah. And strange, I mean, it just feels like just a few weeks ago, uh, you know, which it was, obviously, the, the Monday Labor Day Ticats, uh, or Ticats versus Toronto. Like, it's a same, it's a weird, we're playing Toronto twice on Mondays at home. It's a interesting, uh, interesting season schedule. There's a lot of, there's a lot of little strange things in this year's schedule i mean we, we're going on another long week like there's nothing but short weeks and long weeks you know this year it seems like for the team um very excited to get everybody back in uh tim horton's field uh hamilton's finest out there and uh to watch the tie cats try to shape things up uh in, in the east and a lot of and then uh, ottawa and montreal have their matchup it's going to be things are going to start solidifying and after this week we'll have five games left in the season. Unbelievable, man. Like we're closing in on it. Yeah. It's going to be a good stretch, but definitely control your destiny. And, uh, but again, we got to, you know, winning games is the most important, but you, you got to get some progress and get ready for those playoffs. Right. And yep. I don't think that product that won the last two games is, is going to, is going to beat those, those juggernauts. Yeah, come, but we'll see. One yeah. game at a time. Uh, who does Sask play this weekend when you're out there? Calgary. Nice. That'll be a good one. Yeah, that's uh. They, there's a. I had some crazy games that actually both both ways. Calgary was always a team. I mean, they. You think Sask and Winnipeg is the biggest rivalry because of Labor Day and the Banjo yeah. Bowl? But in my days, Calgary was always the. Uh, the closest games yeah. and the most exciting the most amount of overtime we had i think i did three ties in my in my six years against calgary really? <laughs> uh overtimes like some of my biggest games but also just like offensive shootouts onside yeah. kicks all kinds of stuff so um, that's awesome man yeah hopefully it'll be a good one and uh either way the, the stadium will be rocking and it'll be exciting to see because i i haven't actually been to mosaic yet the new one yeah cool Cool. Yeah, nice stadium. I really, I really enjoyed playing there, though. I uh, never got the wind out there, but the uh, um, good for you, man. Excited to hear more about that. We'll talk about it next week, and I'll be sure to check uh, check it out uh, on uh, Saturday for the game to, to see you get honored at halftime again. Ticat fans, we are uh, we are going to catch up with Andy next week. He's going on the Plaza of Honor in Saskatchewan this week, and then the Ticats will be hosting the Argonauts on Monday for the Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, be sure to check that out, and you can listen to our broadcast on the Ticats Audio Network. Andy, good talking with you, man. I'll talk to you next week. Good luck out in Sask. Thanks, Task.